Today we've got the DeSalvo Systems Aluminum Pi 4B. Works for the two gigabyte, one gigabyte, four gigabyte, and eight gigabyte, all the Raspberry Pi 4Bs. And man, the attention to detail on this thing and the CNC work on this is just a work of art. This is a passively cooled case, meaning that the case acts as a heat sink. So you don't need additional heat sinks, you don't need any fans. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons, and we're gonna do an overview of this case. We're also gonna do a test, see how well it cools. So everything is included, including the Allens, the rubber feet, as well as the thermal grease. In this video though, we're gonna be using some high-end thermal grease. I'll put a link in the description. It's the best, the kingpin. So just having a look, it's a two-piece setup and there's four really nice stainless steel screws and the Allen wrench included. Um, and so to get started, you just wanna build up. That's the top piece. The bottom piece fits the pie in it. First thing to do is just put your pie in the bottom piece and then there's four screws that tighten the pie into the bottom piece. Um, also, I'm spreading the heat sink paste as well. He says to put it on the actual top part of the case. I already had some on my CPU, so I just put it on the other two chips. Very, very thin. He says in the instructions, even use your finger to wipe it on there. Very, very thin. So here I am mounting the pie on the bottom piece of the case. And then um, now that the thermal paste is on, also note if you have a two gigabyte version, you might need the riser that I have here. There's a little pink riser on my RAM chip just to make it fit properly. But once your pie's you know, nice and snug and in there, you'll just combine the two tops and then tighten the four um, Allen wrench screw, stainless steel screws. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Super easy case to put together, compact, and it's beautiful. You gotta really get a close up on that. Like it had, those are little lines, like a file for the leaves and the, and the raspberry segments, I guess you would call it. And I really like this, you could see like the CNC machine, like where it went. So that part's really cool. Still gives you access to the GPIO pins. It is passive cooling, quiet, and honestly, it is gorgeous. I really like the craftsmanship here. It's, it tells a story, it's billet, it's got good hardware on it. So for all those reasons, A plus. You can get to the ports really easily. Things to note. One, the price. It is a little more expensive, but you're getting a solid piece of aluminum. I mean, you could probably even recycle this thing for a few bucks. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's a lot more to manufacture. It's made in the USA. So, you know, you could be proud supporting, uh, you know, a USA uh, small business is um, the SD card. It's not one of the easier pull in, pull out, which isn't a huge deal at all. I just want you to be aware that unless you have long nails or you have tweezers, you might need that. Number two, it can block Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signal or at least weaken the signal. Now, I pretty much plug in mine to Ethernet all the time and then um, the Bluetooth controller thing, six, 10 feet, when you start going around like longer than that, you may have uh, some issues. The other thing I thought that he could improve upon as far as this design is as you see here, um, the um, Wicked Aluminum case has the, um, you know, the, the ACT button and the power, whether it's on or off. That would be kind of nice to know. Um, you, do, you can still see your ethernet lights, but other than that, it's really hard to tell whether it's on or off unless you have a display. And sometimes it's nice to know whether it's on or off with or without a display. The other thing, it does not have the little wall mounts here like the Wicked Aluminum does, but to be honest with you, I've never wall mounted a case before. Have any of you? I'm really curious to see. Um, the rubber feet are very nice, and then this detail right here is just phenomenal. Like this right here is phenomenal, phenomenal detail like I have to say this raspberry looks amazing like you have to see it in real life to to really appreciate it um, but other than that you know we've seen similar designs before this one has you know very different angles to it you know this one kind of waves out this one more of a T design here is the uh, website so made in factory in Arizona you see some of his photos it looks like there is a, a 3 and a 3b as well if you want to get it for one of the other boards. If you ever watch a CNC machine, they're so cool. Does they just shred off the little pieces? 30 degrees to start, but no, yeah, it's gonna get hotter. Okay, kind of hanging out around 33, 32 at idle. Not bad, it's actually really good. That's actually amazing. 
So what you're gonna notice about this case is it's gonna heat up and it'll stay hot. So we should get a higher cumulative peak score on this because it's going to heat up so quickly and the fan is gonna cool it off so fast. It is warm to the touch, but not hot at all, to be honest, yeah. But let's just keep running these tests. I'm gonna run about two or three of these to see how hot we can get it. All right, we got one more degree. It's doing a really good job though, I can tell you right now. All right, see, we got up to 37. So final conclusion, yes, it's gonna keep getting hot and hot. I've been doing this for like 30 minutes at this point and uh, it's really starting to slow down. So it's for everyday use, it's gonna do great and it did a really good job holding up. All in all, um, I like it for a high quality aluminum case. It's definitely a great contender. Just note those pros and cons here. Um, and then it's up to you. You know, that's what's so great about the Raspberry Pi scene is you literally have hundreds of cases and combinations of cases to go with um, as you saw with the heat with the actual like does it cool well yes it cools phenomenally well yes it is kind of a um, a large heat sink so as you play for hours and hours the whole thing's going to get hot but it's still going to dissipate heat over time especially with the with with it like this this whole thing acts as a heat sink so while it might go up in temperatures you're never going to get close to throttling unless you're playing like a 24 hour not 24 hours but i want to say you have to play at least five to ten hours straight with no breaks with your cpu maxed out you know until you might see some throttling on this thing for everyday use you're never going to be able to throttle this thing i guarantee it so that's what i think let me know y'all think don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one